live from Mountain View, California, it's The Q at OpenStack Silicon Valley, brought to you by headline sponsor, Mirantis. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Silicon Valley for the OpenStack SV conference. Go to our new CrowdChat um, application. If you're from LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, jump in on the hashtag crowdchat.net slash OpenStack SV. Join the conversation. I'm John Furrier, this is theCUBE. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, we like to call it the ESPN of tech, and uh, my co-host Jeff Frick here with me this week. Our next guest is, I'm excited to have on because she was an amazing uh, media person at GigaOM, uh, GigaOM Research, now working for Google in the market intelligence for the cloud group. Joe Maitland, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me. Um, we love Google, what Google's doing right now. First of all, I'm a big fan of Google, living in Palo Alto and watching them grow up through the years as a startup to success, huge success story, right? But they never really were that outbound focus on, on their business because it was a cloud, right? Search engine, but now on the enterprise side with cloud, huge opportunity. Um, a lot of folks from Google actually going out in the market, pressing the palms, talking to people, having events. Mm -hmm. That's the group you're in. So give us the update. So you're a, you're a media person, analyst, now you're inside the Google, yeah. Googleplex. Yeah, 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 sure. Tell so us the story, how did that happen? Well it's been like, probably, I think it's about seven months now I've been at Google and you know, it's just incredible to see the pace just within seven months I've been at the company that it has moved this business from being like, you know, sort of known among kind of hardcore cloud developer types to now being like a main street platform that the, the whole market is watching very closely. So, and even within the last three months even, you can see the momentum is just, you know, steamrolling now. So what do you analyze? You analyze market trends? Because you, you're, you're in, what's happening in media is interesting in the disruption side. People are vertically integrating kind of media because of the internet and mobile. You can do a direct business model. Certainly in the VC community, Andreessen Horowitz is programming directly. Wall Street Journal writers joining Sequoia Capital. Mm -hmm. People are bringing analysts in-house. I mean, this seems to be the trend. The democratization and the communications is about the content. Right, 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 right. I think so, yeah. And I just, you know, from my perspective, I've always, you know, had a kind of um, somewhat critical eye on the market and, uh, you know, a healthy kind of skepticism and, you know, I think big technology companies, and Google's no different, you know, they, uh, and especially out here in Silicon Valley, you know, can be in somewhat of a bubble, right? And it's important to understand, you know, how the rest of the market perceives you, um, most importantly, that how customers perceive you, uh, and just sort of having that voice of the customer. So I think that sort of coming from a background of research and media and stuff where you're really close to the, you know, the, the feet on the street is a useful position. So I'd love to follow up on that because I yeah. think most people's perception of Google, rightly or wrongly, is probably that, that they, they haven't really cared as much. And right. they, you know, they've, they're delivering their products and they're, they're rolling along and, mm -hmm. and the adoption of those products has been really, really great. So they haven't necessarily had to you know, kind of listen to the customer because they're kind of developing before we know what we need. Kind of Apple-esque, if you will, with mm -hmm. some of the stuff the Jobs used to do. So how, how are they doing that and how are they doing that culturally inside what has been such a dominant engineering culture to now actually know they actually got to go sell and right. talk to people and have meetings and well, I think the cloud, those types of things. Uh, you know, the cloud platform business is not a new business inside of Google focused on um, you know, more the B2C, B2B space, right? The apps business, the Google apps business has been in, in the market for uh, many, many years talking to enterprise customers, talking to small, medium-sized businesses. So, and has built a large organization there that you know is what you would think of more as a traditional um, B2B type um, organization. So the cloud platform business is, is basically in that group and uh, building you know, those same kind of core skill sets. So yeah, they, they led the way. Yeah, okay, interesting. So talk about the analysis. Let's, let's, uh, let's put our critical eye on the market. Yeah. And let's, while you're here, we'd love to have analysts on theCUBE. Last week at the Tableau conference, we had analysts, and, and that's a great company, like, like Google. It's hard to really find the flaws, but there are things that people are working on. So, what's your take of the cloud opportunity out there right now? 
where's the hype, where's the sizzle, where's the steak, who's got the meat on the bone? <laughs> Talk about yeah. the horses on the track, whatever metaphor we want to use. What do you see out there right now as the big mega trend? What's the landscape look like from your perspective? Well, I think that now there's absolutely no question that it's kind of, it's, it's the mainstream delivery mechanism for, for IT uh, and consumption of IT now. Like there's no question of, you know, will we or won't we do cloud, right? It, it, it is the sort of de facto model for delivery and consumption of IT. So that's, that's kind of the basis point. And then after that, I think, um, you know, we've had this constant debate for a long time about public versus hybrid versus, you know, and different vendors trying to slot in here. I think that that um, mantra has kind of gone away and the, the hybrid story is what the customer has been demanding for a long time. And, you know, that kind of brings us back around to sort of OpenStack and what its original um, promise was. Um, we have some thoughts there about, you know, yeah. why that didn't necessarily take off in the way that people expected. Talk about Amazon, is it unstoppable train at this point? Is it the tsunami that's going to take the whole beachhead? How does Google put that seawall up, as we say, because certainly OpenStack's trying. I mean, Amazon is driving lower cost, which is commoditizing, and they're innovating. So, you know, it's almost going to be free for developers soon if they keep on doing this at this pace. So, they're adding more stuff at reInvent, we're expecting a big enterprise push. Uh, we'll be broadcasting live there. So, how do you guys answer Amazon, and what does the OpenStack community need to do? What, I mean, developers want infrastructure as code. Mm. Born in the cloud, developers love Amazon. But now IT, they're born on prem, mm -hmm. premise. Mm -hmm. So they're going to do a little bit of born on premise and migrate to the cloud. That hybrid is, is the killer turf. So how do you compete, how do you guys compete, how do everyone else compete with the wave of Amazon uh, hitting the beach? Mm -hmm. So I mean, Google's viewpoint on, uh, on the market is really that you know, to date, cloud has been sort of really hard to do. Um, looking at like all the players, right? Whether you're talking about OpenStack, with, you know, the, the big public, you know, clouds, it's been too hard basically. And the viewpoint that we have is that it should be much more of a frictionless, uh, you know, frictionless ap um, approach. And a lot of the efforts that Google has underway are about just basically making cloud super, super easy and simple to use. You know, we have sort of in our private uh, lives, you know, all kinds of technologies that have won the day just purely because they were easy to use, right? And then once you get inside, inside of work, you know, it's the same, you have the same brain, right? You're not suddenly yeah. switching into this different person that sits, you know, working during the day. You want things to be simple. And the enterprise So frictionless, has, frictionless and right. seamless for the, any developer, right, whether right, born on the cloud or in IT. Right, and the idea of sort of portability, right, the openness of it. So, so far clouds have been very closed, pretty much locked in. Um, the promise of OpenStack was that you would be able to move workloads between different OpenStack clouds. That dream never happened. We think containers are, are a better way to do that. And, yes, uh, containers. Yeah, Docker's and the whole really kind of Docker momentum, yeah. which went from sort of nothing a couple of quarters ago to now being this hot thing. Docker um, experiments turned into the real deal. I mean, VMware just co-opted it. The VMware, we saw that announcement. Um, but that really appeals to the developer, right? Uh, yeah, and it does, and I think, but if you ask any IT shop, right, they're, they're trying to just make the infrastructure easier to use, um, and they're just, they're trying to make applications easy con to consume for the end users. So anything that does that, I think yeah. is going to be embraced by, by so all So we have sides. a question coming from our crowd chat here, which is our uh, innovative LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter chat on the hashtag, um, and we, it comes from Stu Miniman. Neither AWS or Azure is, are active in OpenStack. Why is Google cloud? And then someone said, that's probably a question for Amazon and Microsoft, not Google. <laughs> but yeah. can you comment? I mean, obviously Google's always been open source, right. um, been friendly, but why, why are you guys involved in OpenStack and obviously Amazon? Well, we definitely believe that um, you know, open source is extremely important in this marketplace. And we think that OpenStack, um, you know, we, we will, we're going to back the OpenStack that is the preferred way to, to use OpenStack, right? There hasn't yet been a single semantic uh, deployment model for OpenStack, which is why it's kind of merged in this sort of complex, still uh, installer phase, you know, of the technology. Once that's finally ironed out, then, then Google will be all over this thing like a rash, right? But until, it, uh, until we get to that stage, in the meantime, 
Containers we think will work very well locally within OpenStack. Red Hat's doing a ton of great work there with its atomic um, project. So I think that's probably. So you'll be all over like a rash. I love that, love that phrase, because what you're implying then, if I can dissect that, was as the, as the building blocks or Lego blocks get set, because that's mm. the attractiveness of OpenStack from what all right. this, the C-level and IT guys you talk to, hey, I want to program my own Amazon. Right. Um, so you're saying when the building blocks are there, the Legos, if you will, mm -hmm. then you see it really coming together. Right, I think so. I think when there's a, a standard that everyone gets behind, you know, and that's what we're watching for very closely. But um, that begs the question, how far do you think we are away from that? Yeah, that's a good, I mean, we'll learn that here really at this, at this show, but <clears throat> I think that there's still, you know, a lot of work to be done, right? The installer for OpenStack is something like 30,000 lines of code. If you make one mistake in the installation process, it falls over. So it's, it's still incredibly hard to use and, okay. and get set up. So, you know, is that like a, year f a year's worth of work to get that, you know, fixed? I don't know, but you know, it's, it's considerable. Still a ways to go. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that's always been the knock, right? But then, but then we keep hearing that the, the distributions are getting closer and closer and closer, mm -hmm. but, um, but then you talk to someone who's kind of tangential to the world and they, they give you the wink wink. No, not well, really. You can't take one tool and put, point it at two different OpenStack distros, right? They, they, don't, they don't talk to each other. Yeah. So yeah, that's hard if you're a customer. So, so uh, yeah. Tim Crawford mentions when there's a single version, single direction of OpenStack, then you'll be all over it. Is that what you meant? He, was, it a, was it a direction? Was it the building blocks? No, it's the building, the, the actual semantic model, the deployment model of it. There yeah. is no single way that you deploy OpenStack today. It's, there's 35 different ways to. So what's your yeah. commentary on Martin Miko selling Eucalyptus? Now you got a kind of a two hat, put your analyst hat on. Take your Google hat off for a second and comment on Martin. Obviously, we love Martin, his history is, he's yeah. just a great guy, he's a tech athlete, my sequel is well documented, what that's enabled. Um, but real surprise to me to see that move. What's your take yes on that? Yes no, I mean, the past 12 months, he's definitely been in you know, conversations on stage at Structure, you know, the Giga Arm event, he's definitely got warmer. Chum in the waters. Getting, getting <laughs> like warmer, shall we say, towards the OpenStack community, and he actually said, to his credit, he said right from the very beginning, and even the early days, when the APIs are ready, you know, when actually he said when the APIs are ready, and by that he meant when OpenStack has 30% market share, they would get behind it. So I think you know he's he's kind of just he's following his yeah. his and strategy. And so. he brought that up around keeping up with Amazon. I called it a moving train. Yeah. I mean Amazon's unleashing new features at, at a pace that's pretty impressive. Um, so yeah. I said, how do you keep up with that? He's like, well, just we lock into the APIs. Um, how do they keep up with Amazon? Um, if they're going to have that fast follower strategy, is that sustainable in your opinion? How does OpenStack keep you know, up? How or? does Martin's uh, follow with Eucalyptus having the AWS compatibility, yeah. follow the fast follower is their strategy. He said that here this morning. Right. That's pretty hard to do. Yeah, and I think you know, it's actually hard for customers as well to keep up with that release train. Um, you know, you, you watch sort of like, look at the, the customer base and talk to customers, how many of them are actually on the latest features, the latest products, how many of them have taken advantage of the latest price cuts, you know, do they even know about the latest price cuts? Sometimes like, you can get ahead of yourself in the acceleration and forget, you know, that customers need to come along with you. So, you know, that's an important piece of it. So talk about the API economy. I know you, I, you know, some of your writings and research you know, we love that notion, but it's kind of an ambiguous term. You mentioned it, Martin was obviously looking at the APIs. We've had API debates on theCUBE with Randy Bias and others around, you know, what should we do? Should we standardize around this? Should it's a free for all? What does the API economy mean to customers? I mean, how do you talk to folks about that trend? Because we are living in an API world. The container thing is obviously from a REST perspective, looks good. Stateless applications look great with Docker. Then you got stateful applications. So all these new trends are kind of connecting in around the hybrid. Mm -hmm. So what does the API economy or landscape look like? What is the preferred state of that piece of the market? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's, you know, there's always, this sort of goes back a little bit to your earlier question. I think that the, this is a huge market. There's going to be multiple players here. Um, and what you're looking for from a customer perspective is, uh, you know, stable APIs, consistent APIs, APIs that support, um, you know, services globally. Um, so I, th I think that's the kind of, you know, from the customer looking, customer looking in, that's the, 
the um, the, the bare minimum. Yeah. Um, and you know, then there's you know, there's always going to be emerging new things, and then it's just how well they talk to the existing world. Do you get to um, be critical internally at Google? Do you do they give you the latitude? Because that's you know, you have you've had that experience. They probably want that from you. They probably want you to be mm -hmm. objective and say, hey, you know, we can slap them around a little bit. Slap them into shape, if you will. Right. Because the vendors that promote themselves too much can't tend to get a backlash. Hey, listen, everybody at Google is like that. Let me tell you, it's very... The, like, the, like promoting themselves? No, no, or no, no, no. Like understand the, the, the backlash? No, no, just, just debate internally. It's, it's very, very vibrant discussion inside the company <laughs> across like all vibrant. parts of the organization. <laughs> Good yeah, word. Vibrant, <laughs> vibrant is, the, like, is a, a vibrant. gentle <laughs> term for it. How are you is, handling that? You, you oh, holding your own? it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. It's <laughs> super healthy, right? And it's like... It's sort of the notion of Darwin, right? If everyone yeah. has, yeah. you know, is is committing ideas and stuff, eventually the the right idea will. So we have a recommendation if you can carry the flag for us into Google, because I've been to all the IOs mm -hmm. um, since they were founded. Great event, always fun. Get the great giveaways. Although I didn't go this year, I was out of town, but um, they're huge. So will there be like an IO cloud only event? Because it's so massive, IO. Oh, it's you already so crowded. Have it. GCP Live. So the first one was in March. Uh, the next one's going to be in November. Um, What's it, it called? It's called GCP Live, Google Cloud Platform Live. Um, and uh, yep, there'll be probably a couple of thousand people there. It's at the Mission Bay Conference Center. GCP? Um, GCP Live, yeah, Google Cloud Platform Live. Got it. November. In San Francisco? Yep. Great. I think we're going to be there. Cool, I hope so, yeah. But Joe, any advice? commentary for the folks out there? Last question. I mean, it makes sense of OpenStack. For the folks out there who are like looking at this going, is this just another industry standard group that's going to be one big Barney deals and hugs and kisses and kumbaya? Will there anything come out of that? That's the critical, that's the critical eye of some folks. It's like, I'm going to bet my career on this. I don't want to get stuck down this cul-de-sac of nothing. Where's the beef? Where's the meat on the bone? Break that down for the folks that yeah. want to understand, is it real? What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. No, it's real, for sure, it's real, and I think that um, it has to survive, it has to happen for the sake of all of these legacy IT vendors behind us. This is the, as we said, the table stakes now, right, is, is, is cloud computing as a model of delivering consumption of IT. So the vendors, the, the, the guys behind us, HP, IBM, Red Hat, Cisco, et cetera, they have bet their, they've made their bet, and it's OpenStack as a model for cloud, right? And if the future model of IT is cloud and they've picked OpenStack, OpenStack has to work. So I think they have to kind of, you know, for the longest time whenever I heard from these companies, it was all about how we're going to differentiate, how we're going to differentiate. I think they actually need to come together and work on how they're going to be similar and what the core is that they, and decide that and, and kind of um, get past some of that sort of actually competitive piece and uh, make some decisions collectively and, and move the whole thing forward, right? Awesome. Um, well, we so just got a text that says, looks like we're going to be at the um, Google Cloud Platform event in San Francisco with theCUBE. So we will be broadcasting live. So cool. uh, maybe you can co-host it with us. I'd love to, <laughs> love to hang out with you guys. Yeah. You're awesome on theCUBE. And great to have you. The media background also helps because helps you understand the landscape. But you know, you're now on the other side now. so. Good luck with everything and, and maintain that critical eye and you know, healthy skepticism. I love that. That's a nice word cool. to, 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 to maintain. You know, you can't, you can't say too critical. You know, That's it. Maybe you'll be on the other side again. I think. But um, good to see Google out. Joe, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is theCUBE live in Silicon Valley, breaking it down uh, here at OpenStack, Silicon Valley. It's theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.